What up everybody? It's time to do another knife review. Uh, recently, thanks to uh, Love Them Knives, LTK, shout out to you brother. Uh, I have really gotten into the non-branded uh, Chinese production, uh, really they're higher end production knives. Um, now these most of these Chinese manufacturers are OEM manufacturers for other knife companies under other brand names. They have a lot of experience doing knives across a wide price point range and quality range. And uh, a lot of them do lines of knives under their own name. Now, uh, granted, a lot of these knives are copies. Now I say copies. They're copies of well-known knives. Typically, the copies are more of custom knives. They're not copies of uh, production knives. Most of the time when you see something that's a copy of a production knife, it's an actual clone, and it will be a clone branding, clone packaging, and whatnot. I do not deal in those knives. Uh, I know personally too many people in the knife industry and I know how much clone knives hurt the knife industry. That said, I don't have a problem with copies or homage knives at most of the time because the knives that they are copies of, like I say, are custom knives and they are totally, absolutely, 100% out of the price range of the average person and I will say again through experience and I can tell you this like it is fact the average person in the United States will never spend more than twenty dollars for a knife I sold knives for a living I talked personally to thousands and thousands of knife purchasers retail customers every day and I know for a fact they do not spend hundreds of dollars on knives on the average like uh, we do in the knife community. We are knife lovers, we're knife enthusiasts, uh, we appreciate the art of knives, the materials in knives, the ultimate uh, the ultimate drive for perfect fit and finish. We appreciate that and a lot of times we think everybody does but that's not the truth. The average person does not even understand those things. They buy a knife because it looks cool and it's cheap. Alright, so like I say I don't have a problem with copy knives. They are typically a copy of a custom knife that is out of the price range that anybody will ever be able to afford. Okay, uh, a lot of them may be limited custom knives. In this instance, this maker typically, you know, you've got to go to such a high level, you're up above $1,500 for a knife like this, typically in the $1,800 price point, and that's more money than a lot of people will spend on a car. They will never in their life ever spend $1,800 on a knife, ever. Don't even tell them, if you save up a little more money, you can get something a little better, because they don't do it. They're never going to spend that money. They don't have it. They have a family to support. They're on uh, like a minimum income and they're never going to have those knives. So all of that bullshit out of the way for anybody that wants to jump in and say clone, 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 Chinese, 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 you need to buy American. You just keep in mind, not everybody is like you. Not everybody knows what you know and not everybody is going to spend what you spend on a knife. And that's just the facts of life. So, into this knife. What we have is the Green Thorn branded. This is a Shirogorov 95T. This is one of the 95 models. And the T suffix is, I believe, is for turtle. Uh, you can see this machine pattern in the handle. And I believe that was inspired by the markings on a, uh, a tortoise shell, a turtle shell. And I believe that's where that comes from. If I'm wrong, feel free to point that out because I would really like to know. 
Uh, like I say, this is uh, made by Greenthorn. This is a Chinese company. I bought this knife off of eBay. This knife was $88 shipped. $88 shipped, and by the time we get to the end of this review, I think you will see how freaking awesome of a deal that is for this knife. It is a very well made knife and I think that there will be some, some more appreciation for it at the end of this review. Now these ship in a nice little zipper pouch. I like this zipper pouch. It's uh, it's black. The green thorn is sort of goofy. Um, it's silk screened on there. It's not stuck on or anything. Uh, it has a couple of loops on the back. They are elastic-y sort of loops. Uh, I wish they weren't elastic. It would be better for pocket carry or for belt carry. I'm sorry if you wanted to do that. It does have a top handle that is webbing. It's not elastic. I like the orange stitching. Uh, that's just like if you're going to buy a sports car with a black leather interior and it's got, you know, bright orange or red or blue sporty stitching in it. Uh, it gives that sort of effect. You can see on the inside. Let's move that out of the way. Uh, it is a fur, sort of synthetic furry. It's soft lining. The inner uh, pocket is um, in a heavy cordura, just like the exterior, with the same type of stitching. And it's fur lined on both sides. Uh, so there's nothing scratchy in there. The knife comes in a plastic bag tucked down in here. And, uh, you know, that's pretty nice in a, an $88 knife, especially considering the materials uh, fit and finish on this knife. So I think overall at $88 shipped, uh, from an American seller, okay, now you could get just this from uh, DH Gate or AliExpress or something like that, uh, probably $10 cheaper, but you're going to wait uh, three weeks to a month and a half for it to ship. So I paid the little bit extra to get it quickly because just like everybody else in America, I want it right now or I don't want it. Okay, I don't have any patience for something that I really love and I love knives, so I want it right now. So the price value is there, you get the pouch. Let's go into some uh, specifications on this, get them knocked out of the way. The blade length, 3.75 inches or nine and a half centimeters. Uh, this blade stock thickness is 157 thousandths or four millimeters. The blade width or height is 1.15 inches or 29.28 millimeters. The handle length, four and seven eighths inch or 12 and a half centimeters. The handle thickness, 509 thousandths, just slightly over a half an inch, or 12.9 millimeters. The handle width at the widest point, which is up here at the pivot end, is 1.19 inches, or just slightly over 31 millimeters. The closed width, uh, as which will affect your carry, the closed width at the widest, is 1.26 inches or 32 millimeters. The overall length, eight and three quarter inches or 22 and a half centimeters. The weight, get this, 4.13 inches or 117 grams. That's in an eight and three quarter inch all titanium knife. Okay, so you know there's gonna be, if we can see it, extensive milling on the inside of this knife. Uh, it's in a geometric pattern and it is very well done. Actually everything on this knife is very well done. Uh, material wise, the blade is in D2 and you will see on the back of the blade here the only marking on this knife, there is no branding on it, is the D2 for the blade steel. The handles are in titanium. They are flat scales and then have this uh, geometric pattern milled into them. And that is front and back. And I really, really like that. Um, this is obviously, it's been, I believe, bead blasted and then tumbled. So you can see in this pattern where it was bead blasted, which will give a more matte finish and then tumbled you see the center of these cutouts where the tumbling affected it more than right around the edge. And that to me gives a very three-dimensional look uh, to an already three-dimensionally machined material. I very much like that look. All right, 
the hardware is a sort of prioritized, uh, stylized hardware. You can see that it's got this slot in it. Um, it is uh, a prioritized hardware except, come on now, except for the lock face insert, and that's in Torx. Uh, the rest is this prioritized slotted hardware, which you might first panic from, but don't overthink it. A flathead screwdriver will fit it easily, and you can manipulate it without damaging anything. Uh, I will say this is a, uh, not a problem. It's just a, a little thing that is uh, common with a lot of adjustable pivot knives. Uh, you've got the adjustment side. You've got the fixed side. This is not press fit, and it will turn, all right? Um, so you've, you've got to take that into account when adjusting a pivot. But straight up, I have not had to adjust this knife. The centering is almost perfect on it. Um, I've not had to mess with it at all. All right, uh, let's go into the pocket clip next. I love, love, love this pocket clip in so many different ways. I love it, love it, love it, love it. It is a fairly deep carry for a machined titanium pocket clip. Uh, it's not deep carry, it's fairly deep. Again, it's got this sort of oversized single uh, mounting screw and it's down into a recess so it's not gonna move. I've not had any issues with that. You've got a continuation of the 3D machining effect on the flat surface of the pocket clip and then you've got this, uh, I, you know what, I call it a swedge, a double swedge on this. And then the coolest thing about this pocket clip, let me show you this, I love this. Look down into that pocket clip. Not only is it machined, the center of the contact is machined out. I love that. It goes in and out of the pocket very easy. It's very attractive. It's an added feature on that pocket clip. I love that pocket clip as much as I've ever loved a pocket clip on a knife. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful design. Uh, Shurigorov Design Group, my God, uh, that is awesome. Hands off to you. And then it was well done in this uh, Chinese production copy. And man, I wish I had $2,000 to buy a real one of these, but uh, I don't have $2 in my pocket right now, so chances of that are slim. All right, next thing, the action. Well, this thing, as you can see, has very good action. It is on a ball bearing pivot. It is very smooth. Um, the detent is absolutely perfect. I would call it an upper medium hard detent meaning that it fires hard, but the detent is not so hard that it is uncomfortable or hard to fire. I've not noticed any issues with, in a grip, having any pressure on the lock bar uh, in this design. So that's fantastic too for you right-handers. Uh, the lockup on it is fairly early. It is about 25% on my example, um, or my sample, I'm sorry. And uh, it's very solid. There's no play. There's absolutely, I can flex that blade. There's no play in that pivot. It's as solid as any lockup on a frame lock I've ever had. Uh, centering is very, very, very good. It is just a, just a, just the barest little bit head off from perfect, um, depending on how you look at it. I mean, it could be perfect. It could be an optical illusion from, uh, you know, lining up between the scales. But it is very, very good. So no issues at all in the action, the lockup, the uh, centering, all was very good. Um, and... I think, I think you would be hard pressed to spend twice the amount of money to get anything better. Uh, I'll compare it to my favorite, my go-to comparison for flippers, which is my Zero Tolerance uh, 0452CF. Understandably, one of the best flipper designs in the world, in my opinion, and is widely loved by Zero Tolerance fans. 
this is just as good a flipper. It feels slightly different because you've got a different blade profile to flipper tab and lockup geometry than the 0452, but it flips just as well, it fires just as hard, and it's just as nice. All right, uh, let's see here. Let's go into fit and finish. Well, I've shown you the action and centering and everything, and you can look at the handle here. Uh, you don't see any machining marks. Uh, I don't see any issues in the finish at all. Everything is smooth. Everything is radius. Uh, this has been tumbled, and it feels that way. It feels soft around the edge, almost like your uh, carry firearm with a melted treatment around the edge. Uh, although not extreme, it is soft. Um, as far as the blade goes, you're in a sort of pointy... Uh, moderate drop drop point with a uh, sort of an upward trailing edge profile up to the tip which is as far as center line to the handle is slightly high in the center line of the handle so it's not a radical drop point uh, although it is a drop point it is a full flat grind um, the grinds are not into the uh, back of the blade so it was well done across this blade width and with the four millimeter stock it gives you a very thin uh, very slicey edge uh, the edge grind on mine is very well done um, the primary grind was very even that made the edge grind very even you see you've got a sharpening choil here. It is well up past the plunge. So there should be no issues, uh, no problems with bad uh, sharpening flare at the plunge here. Uh, no issues sharpening at all. Now this has the factory edge on it and I'm going to do something here I typically I do not do in my videos which is cut paper and there is a little catch. I think I've actually bumped that against something. But you can see here it is very sharp. And we're actually going to pull out some magazine paper here and try to get that cut. All right. You can see even with magazine paper. Whoops. That's my bad. Even with magazine paper, the factory edge is pretty good. Uh, there might be a little catch in it. Like I say, I think I bumped it up against something and uh, did, uh, uh, affected that edge just a little bit. But it is a very, very sharp knife. So overall, the fit and finish, guys, is fantastic. Um, for $88 to get a titanium handle with this type of machining work on it, uh, some nice custom looking hardware and look at that standoff that standoff is a hoss and it is pocketed into that handle scale uh, which is an added little detail that knife enthusiasts will see we'll see that detail where a normal person wouldn't but that's a very nice little detail uh, you've got this little milled out pocket space here where the flipper is going to protrude through and that is very easy on your finger because as you do that flipper as your finger comes off of the tab it comes against this part of the handle and while you know I typically don't worry about that that is that uh, added chamfer in there not only is it a visual detail but it does feel a little better uh, under use this knife uh, it's uh, it's fantastic guys it's free fall smooth uh, and like I say, that blade is tightened up. You saw me uh, flexing the actual blade and not getting any play out of the pivot. So I think at $88 shipped in such a fantastic design as this. Look at that handle. It's a classic handle shape, a classic blade shape, modernized. Okay. Um and then finished in this three-dimensional sort of uh, machining look again 
uh, hats off to Shirogorov design team. Uh, like I say, I wish I could afford the real thing, but this knife is a fantastic deal. Um, again, you know what? I don't, I don't know what your thoughts are on copies versus clones versus the real thing and all of that, but I can tell you right now, I don't feel bad about buying this knife. And I'm pretty protective of my knife-making friends and associates. I've dealt a lot with, as a salesperson, with company reps from companies. I, you know, I honestly, I don't feel like I'm hurting anybody with this purchase. Um, maybe this video, this purchase, will drive somebody to go out and buy an actual Shirogorov and spend that $1,800 or $2,000. And if that happens, then that is great. I'm great that this video inspired somebody to do that. If it inspires you to go buy one of these Green Thorn versions, then that is fantastic also. Because I'm not going to lie, I love this knife. Everybody that I've shown it to loves this knife. Absolutely fantastic fit and finish. Uh, D2 blade steel, while not uh, high on everybody's super, super steel list right now, is still a great tool steel to do blades out of. It is nearly stainless. It is not quite stainless. It doesn't have quite the chromium in it to qualify as stainless. But it is nearly stainless. It is very easy to take care of. Uh, I use Tough Glide on all of my knife blades, regardless of what steel they're in, uh, which goes on wet and then dries. It leaves a dry film behind. It's a fantastic rust inhibitor. If you don't use Tough Glide on your blades, I recommend that. Um, so my overall opinion is this. Buy one of these things. Buy one of them. You will love this. Buy it in this configuration. Uh, the flat scale configuration. There's sort of a sun ray type of machine configuration that I think that they call the ice breaker. Um, and it's in a blue anodized finish. But overall, they're the same knife, just machined differently. And they're all truly beautiful pieces. So, in closing, I, I don't know what I can say that I haven't already said, except... If you're comfortable with buying a copy knife, you know you'll never buy the real thing, and you don't see any shame or harm in that, then you need to buy one of these. For well less than $100, I don't think you're going to do much better. All right, guys. I appreciate you taking the time to view my video. God bless all of you. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later.